Okay, so composing a scene. Um, somebody had mentioned about that, about uh, how to do that kind of thing, and uh, you can't really explain it. You just you can sort of demonstrate some of it, I guess, because it's different for everyone, right? Like that's the beauty of the model railroad. Like the whole model railroad concept is a problem. And I don't know if people think of it that way, but you know, for me, it is, and it's a, a series of solutions to a multitude of problems that you create because you want to fit what you see in in your mind's eye or in the theater of your brain into a limited footprint and you want it all to work and you want it to blend and work seamlessly and be an enjoyment and give you some fulfillment. So you just have to compress scenes and uh, you got to use creative license to make everything work. So I want to transition from section one. This is axed in steel. Obviously on the prototype the track went down through here. I would have to cut a hole in the wall in the house to continue that silly idea so because the whole scene bends and turns I want to transition in this first few feet here into the next section on what I'm going to do further on down the road and I want to stand a trees in here just like there is on the prototype and at the foot of the Alex Fraser bridge so I can compress all those trees into this section and use artistic license to create a uh, smooth transition so I'm going to have this sort of muddy loggy logging not logging really but just a muddy back road taking the viewer up in through these trees and then what takes place over there is for another discussion but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build this like a component okay like separate components okay and I'll show you what I mean by that Okay, how's everybody doing? So this is section two. This is the beginning of section two and the border to section one where the barge slip is in the marine front and industrial area is here. So from my hand all the way down past Dusty there is another 10 feet. Okay, so it's about 11 foot run in total. So uh, what I'm going to do here is um, I just want to show you how I develop sections like scenery sections or what I would call transition zones. Uh, there is a prototypical aspect to this area in terms of trees, but where I'm going to change up is there won't be just cottonwoods or deciduous. There's going to be two or three very large old growth trees here, namely a Sitka spruce and western red cedar and Douglas fir and so on. And this area is going to actually slope up. There's going to be a gradual slope up here over Dusty. Hi Dust. And, um, but I'm going to stop it right here and then just add to it later because I have track work. This track work stops here and I have to, that fans out uh, into a yard down in the corner. And I don't want to deal with that section yet. So I'm going to build up just past this where this plywood is here, this scene. And, and it's going to have a creek coming down the slope like a babbling trout creek you know just like the creeks i used to hike when i was a kid with my fly rod and then it's going to taper off into this kind of run out which which seems like a ditch but then goes into a culvert here and then runs underneath and exits where the fraser river is as you all know already if you've been following the channel so that's what i'm going to do but what i'm going to do here uh is I want to have a road that sort of goes up in behind here and I'm not worried about where it goes right now because it'll disappear anyway but I'll show you what I'm going to do in terms of establishing the old growth uh, grove or, or small mini grove is I'm going to build it on this little vignette base here which I just made up of scrap plywood. This is all scrap plywood from some of my earlier build from River Road and Glover Road and I want to incorporate it into the layout. It was my, one of my cutting boards. So, and the reason why I built this is, is, is uh, I know I can get my three main trees on here with support trees. And you can see that I've tapered it here. So I'm going to use some foam to, to pack some of it out in cell clay. But I want to be able to move this around because what I'm going to do is is when it's finished, I can work on this on the convenience of the bench below, is I'm going to lay some parchment paper down, and then I'll just tag it with one screw from below. And I won't actually glue this base down. I'll just model up to the edge of it. So if I need to move this, if I want to get photography down this way, because it really opens up down in this direction, like for the barge slip operations, I can move this whole island out of the way 
and then just put it back in, which is the way, what I learned in film, but I'm just miniaturizing the concept. So that's what I'm going to do. And also, if I ever have to move the layout or, uh, heaven forbid, I had to um, sacrifice the bench work, um, all the models, the buildings, the trees, little vignettes like this will be saved as separate little models in the same way that I did with Glover Road. Okay, so this is going to be where the creek runs into the culvert pipe, or sort of uh, narrow kind of uh, still water. I imagine uh, if it's not flowing, but if it's flowing, uh, depending on the rains, it's going to probably turn into a, a creek of some sort. So I need a way for the water to get under the track, so I'm going to use this here. I built this up. I was going to use this earlier on, but I changed uh, the culvert storm drain to a more of a a uh, little bit older metal roof feel, but this one here uh, I want to represent as a, maybe an upgrade. So it'll be all sort of concrete work here. And then uh, I'm going to put that in here so, and I'll just cut it down into the cork. So I'm just using matte medium here. You can use Mod Podge or whatever. Just want to seal up this cork. Cork tends to shed, right? You don't want any of that stuff shedding onto your water finish or paint surface when you're ready to to lay that in. Um, in this case, it's just I'm just going to do all the terrain, and, the, and then I'm going to leave these rough parts as shoals. Like this cork makes a nice rough texture, so I'm just going to have wet through some of this. It's not going to be all poured even like a like a canal. It's going to look like a west coast stream, right, with shores and whatnot. And this is, uh, like I mentioned this before, like all my scenery is soaked in matte medium. Not full strength like, like here, but 50-50 water. It just puts a nice solid acrylic flat, dead flat membrane over all your scenery and terrain. So it's practically bulletproof. And uh, if you want to vacuum it off or sweep it off, it doesn't hurt the terrain. It just, the dust accumulates on top of the layer that's a hard acrylic layer, like your house, like the paint in your house that stands the test of time. Well, so does this stuff. And so you can. Be quite aggressive with a brush and a vacuum and clean your layout off and it holds all the color in and everything else. You don't have to worry about it. We got a cleaner layout, so anyway, I get something going here to establish a bit of a creek. And if I want to revise it I can. I can just retouch it up again.
Okay, so this is just a piece of scrap 1 8 mahogany that I found in the shed. And it's going to be used to uh, establish a substrate for my just my back road here. This is not really an entrance or an access way to this particular parking lot. It's at the backdrop by the trees where the prototypical entrance is. So this will just be one lane. It's 14 feet wide here. But it's going to be like a, just a dirt road. Okay. So because the actual prototype, there's just a, a right of way and, and a gravel dirt road on the side, like a ditch kind of road that runs down this way. But because the whole layout curves, I, I have to compromise here to make this work. And then this will get a slope in here, foam with some trees to, to blend into the Axton Steel Company kind of to make this corner work. Okay, so now this piece pops in here like this. You can see it's just a collage of wood. Uh, some panel there, mahogany panel I had. 3 8 plywood. I just cut it because I want to make it fit so it sits in here like this. Okay. And uh, this is cell clay and I bent it down before it cured just so it would sit tight. But I can fill that in anyway with just some very light, you know, material that'll break away with some heavily diluted matte medium when I want to merge it into the seam. This won't matter, but just the seam along here so that I can pop it if I ever have to. But that's something that's easy to remedy. So I'm going to keep this right here because this is where this is going to go. And now I'm going to introduce this back here, these blocks in here like this. They're going to go in like that. Okay, I'm going to glue all that together. This would be one big sort of island, like one big uh, topographical diorama. And I'm going to carve in, like there'll be major trees in here and back here. Maybe a small ones in front of the track near the end. We'll see. I'm not worried about that right now. But through here, there's going to be a creek because there's a creek that runs through here and goes through this culvert. So I have a little culvert here. And this is going to go on here like this. And here's a little sneak peek from Glover Road. This little trackside shanty is going to go there. So see how the scene forms? Like this takes thought. You just think it through. You, you just be patient, right? You try stuff, right? All this blocking here, you see that'll all get carved in with a knife. And I uh, just thought I'd drop this too. Like I'm not a hard shell scenery guy because it's impossible to plant trees in hard shell. Um, well, it's, it's, it's a nightmare, let's put it that way. So if you're building California terrain, well then fine, right? But I built a massive layout, it was 90 feet long, and I, and, and I jammed in foam, like four inch, two inch foam with PL300 all day long over the whole wooden bench work, just like this, but huge chunks of it, like, thinking, you know, of plate tectonics, you know, just from photos, just setting it up. And then I basically carved the whole layout by hand with two olfanites, one in each hand, basically. I was a sculptor, right? So it was something that I was had a lot of experience in. And I carved all, and I used a crowbar. I just carved the whole thing. It was this big sculpture. And that's the same way I'm going to treat this, like a little bit of small sculpture. And you can... Uh, put um, you know plaster cloth over top of this if you want but I'm just going to use cell clay in certain places and then just glue or matte medium right over top of the foam and, and paint the foam I'm not going to bother with plaster like I don't need plaster so 
Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. 